is CNN World News, the best news channel in America. It's 7 p.m. Our top headlines are looking very grim today. For in South Africa, a terrible thing has happened, and it's not the Russians. Just last week, there was a police massacre in the South African town of Soweto. The students peacefully demonstrated against the latest in the long line of laws unjustly instituting the white population above the Africans. This law was the Afrikaans Medium Decree of 1974, which forced African children to learn Afrikaans in school as well as English. In case you don't know, Afrikaans is the language commonly spoken amongst the white population of South Africa. But Africans vastly prefer English, for they see Afri Afrikaans as the language as quote the language of the oppressor. A nineteen seventy two government survey showed that ninety eight percent of affected Sowetoans were highly opposed to the decree, as were many African teachers associations. Despite this, the, minister, the Deputy Minister of Bantu Education said openly, I have not consulted the African people on the issue, language issue, and I'm not going to. An African might find that the group, uh, the Groot Baas, which we assume means people from the Groot Ba, only spoke Afrikaans or English. It would be to his advantage to know both languages. While this blatant governmental display of inconsideration for its people is enough to sick, sicken any democratic nation, their murderous response to the June 16th protest was simply too, too much. On the morning of the protest, three to 10,000 students congregated at Orlando Stadium for the protest. Upon starting their march, they discovered their route to be blocked by the police. Without bothering them, the students continued their march along a different route that led to Orlando High School. They carried signs and sang, but did nothing offensive. The officer who fired the first shot claimed that some students threw rocks at the police, while others continued to march peacefully, which was why he fired his pistol. More police followed his example, and soon the crowd was fleeing for their lives. This first clash resulted in 23 deaths and more as attacks by police continued. Assaults ceased by evening and military vehicles toured the streets during the night. The riots continued the next day as aggression between police and students increased and more people joined. More armored cars patrolled with officers inside, often shooting at random groups of Africans and helicopters were patrolling from above. 1,500 police uh, officers armed with stun guns and machine guns were called, and even the army was, on res was in reserve for a show of force. Soweto's local s hospital was overflowing with African students with bullet holes in them. These at numbers are unavailable due to doctors re refusing to record the information for fear of the police picking on the children's families. But an estimate of five to 600 dead and over a thousand wounded has been made. Although the South African government claims only the original 23 were killed. Reports from South Africa show that even some of the white population was shocked at this display as 300 white students from, aged, from Johannesburg University staged a protest march through their city center. Similar protests, which were reacted to as violence by the police, broke out all over the country before coming to a halt on June 18th. Now the death toll is reported to be over 600. As a result of these battles and countries boycotting South African goods, economic instability has begun and the South African rand is dropping like the rock. And the UN has made several more restrictions to trade in South Africa in response to this brutality. That's the end of this report. What do those Russians have in store for the US? This and more after these messages on CNN World News. Goodbye.